today uh, uh, my talk will be a bit unusual because you see that I am in a bit unusual place. Uh, some of you might recognize that I am at a uh, Celsi uh, microscopy facility at an Axio Observer Z1, which is a um, motorized, fully motorized epifluorescence microscope, uh, quite a widely used microscope at Celsi. And I won't be uh, showing you um, slides mostly, uh, but I will be uh, showing, doing a live demo of micromanager software. So to, before I uh, move to the microscope and to sharing my screen to show you how I control it with micromanager. So I will first uh, show you just briefly one slide where I will try to explain the, the purpose of micromanager software and uh, some um, challenges uh, with connected uh, with that. So let me share uh, my screen. So, uh, when we want to control a microscope by PC, and uh, we have on one side the physical devices such as cameras, stages, light sources, shutters, nose pieces, focus drive, and so on. And uh, those are connected to computer. So if we have a microscope, which comes as an integrated system from a microscope vendor, like in this case, it's a microscope, uh, which is an integrated system from size, then it will come with a software which can control all the, the components. And you don't need to worry about anything, but in cases where you, you say, want to uh, combine uh, components from different manufacturers. You have, let's say, a, a microscope from one brand, and then you connect to it a camera, which is from a third party brand, or you connect other specialized devices, which are not available maybe from the microscope manufacturer. Then you have to, uh, you might be facing challenges with computer control of the whole system. Uh, so on, uh, there are different uh, levels of the control. So the, so the lowest level are device drivers, which would be provided by the uh, manufacturer of the device. And those handle the, the low level control of the, the device and they can, really receive some commands uh, which tell them what to do. So for example, if your device is a camera, then the commands that you can send to the camera would be maybe how to, to set a certain exposure time and to acquire image and similar. But then each device would have its own commands. So each has its own language. So if you have a camera of one brand, then the, there could be one way how you tell it to capture an image. But for a camera of a different brand, which has different driver, the, uh, the way how you tell it to capture an image might be different. Uh, and then on the other uh, side, we have a software micromanager, which tries to uh, control uh, devices from many different manufacturers. And so there is a challenge how to communicate with all the devices. And the micromanager is structured in such a way that there is the, the core of the software, which uh, has some abstract devices defined and a way how 
uh, it communicates with those devices and what you can do with those devices. So there are the abstract devices contain, for example, a camera. And for the camera, you can set exposure, you can start capture and so on. Another device is a stage, which can go to certain coordinates. And the micromanager, as you will so uh, see very soon, allows you to uh, control these devices in a um, manner similar to, say, the dedicated software from microscope manufacturers. And to uh, bridge the gap between the micromanager core and its own language and the different languages of devices from different manufacturers, there are device adapters, which are interpreters between those different languages. So there will be over say, one command uh, in micromanager core for in the abstract device level, how to set exposure of a camera. And uh, then depending on the brand of the camera use, that you use, then uh, you will have the, need to have the appropriate device adapter, which will translate that command to the language of the, the native camera driver. And one of the, the strengths of micromanager uh, is the, the large, collection of device adapters because micromanager has been around for quite some years and it has a large uh, community support with a lot of users and a lot of developers and contributors so there is a large collection of device adapters which have been created for many uh, commonly used and even not so commonly used microscopy devices. And a lot of manufacturers realized that micro they are aware of the popularity and widespread of micromanager. So they themselves provide device adapters for their devices because they realize that for many customers, this can be a decisive factor whether they would buy a certain product or not whether they can control it by micromanager. So I will uh, close this. And now let's go to, to micromanager itself. So I will uh, start here, uh, micromanager 2.0. Okay, so here in this uh, uh, a window pops up. I hope you can all see it. Can you see my screen? Just to make sure that I'm not talking about something that you you don't see. Yes. Okay, thanks, Yongli. So with that, we can uh, continue. Probably maybe this might be hard for you to see because the letters are quite small. But here is a drop-down menu where you can select uh, from uh, different uh, hardware configuration files. Uh, so you can have multiple uh, hardware configuration files. And I will, in a, a while, explain you more about that. Uh, so I will load one of them. It will always offer you first the, the last used hardware configuration file. I press OK. And so I will talk a bit also about uh, uh, how to set up things uh, in micromanager. Uh, so if 
it might give you an impression that maybe it is more complicated than if you are using, a, a, let's say, a proprietary software from a microscope manufacturer. But uh, I just want you to, to take note that some of the things that I will be showing are the, the steps that are needed to set up the system. And it's not what the uh, you need to uh, deal with when you for, for regular usage of the system. So if you come, say, to a facility here where uh, the system is set up in micromanager, then uh, the user experience shouldn't be much more difficult from what you uh, face with a you know, proprietary uh, microscope control software. In this case, that would be with Zen from size. So uh, here, uh, this is the main uh, panel. I hope you can see it, it's a bit small. So I, I hope you can uh, read it. Uh, what is there? The letters are a bit uh, small, unfortunately. Uh, so we have a... a here different components of the microscope that uh, can be controlled by, uh, by uh, the software. So for example, the first one is the power of transmitted light lamp, the slider. So it's the same thing that I can control also on the hardware when I change the the wheel uh, that controls the transmitted light power. Then uh, we can control the condenser contrast. That means there are the bright field, different face rings and DIC prisms. We can control the condenser aperture. So unfortunately, uh, here it's not in the unit it's of a numerical aperture, but it is in units of millimeter. So that's not that intuitive, I admit, and I'll touch on that uh, in a while. Here we can select uh, objectives from a list. So we have here different objectives from five times to 100 times, and air and immersion objectives. Filter cubes. So currently there is a EIC filter cube for transmitted light. And then we can select from those different uh, fluorescence filter cubes and uh, fluorescence attenuator to regulate the, uh, the intensity of excitation, fluorescence. Uh, illumination field stop that changes the illuminated area. Then here we have, uh, we can change tube lens, so additional magnification, so either one times or 1.6 times additional magnification. And side port just to control where the image goes can be uh, here 100% uh, IPs and uh, or 20% uh, IPs and 80% left for this camera. And then uh, here we set uh, camera exposure. And if I press live, I will see live camera image. Currently, I see just some noise. And uh, of course, so I can do, I can set every component here manually. Uh, there's another uh, feature. I can group some of those settings into one uh, higher level setting 
So I have here something that I called channel, and that allows me to uh, to select the uh, select different preset channels. So I have here different fluorescence channels, which correspond to the different fluorescence filter tubes. Plus, I have here different channels for different uh, transmitted light contrast. I can, uh, to demonstrate it better, I will now put a sample on the stage. and select maybe right field. And first I can find the sample and, and now, if I press live, I should see the sample, only that it's too saturated. Okay, so that's better. What did it with the okay, it's reasonable and focus? So I can see why image. I can see here the histogram and now if I go here to channel and I switch to different channel then I can see uh, image uh, for example fluorescence image so if I switch to uh, Alexa fluor 488 channel so I will now see uh, 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 fluorescence image, and in this case, I probably will have to increase a bit the exposure. To uh, get a better, uh, better signal. Okay, so uh, there are a number of uh, features here in um, the basic control features in Micromanager. Uh, so, for example, I can control the stage. Go back to right here. And uh, if I go here to the stage control, so I can move the I can move the stage different so from small uh, different size steps. And I can also move the the focus. standard uh, features like that. Or I can, with this, I can move the, the stage using a uh, dragging uh, cursor, this feature.
uh, 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 I can uh, do uh, multi, what they call here, multi D acquisition. So that is to acquire things like multi-channel images, time lapses, stacks, or multi-position images. So if I go here to multi D acquisition, so I can, for example, uh, the easiest uh, are multi-channel images. So I can add here uh, different channels. So I will add, so it will add channels in the order how they appear in my list of channels. And then I will, uh, uh, so I can uh, set here the, put here all the channels, and then I can uh, select which of them I want. So for example, I will want some green fluorescence, fluorescence, transmit uh, with light bright field. And I can sub assign different colors to them. So this one could be green. This one could be red, orange, and bright field can be white. And then I can set also uh, exposures for each of the each of the channels. For example, for the fluorescent channels, I can set a bit longer exposure than for uh, for bright field. And but that of course uh, each channel uh, contains more uh, settings than just the filter cube. So if I want to edit the settings for each channel, I can go here to the respective channel and press here, edit. And that will show me all the settings that are relevant for this channel, for, for uh, all the settings that, are, uh, that apply to this channel. So uh, you can see for each channel, I, am, I can set the filter queue. I can set the fluorescence uh, illumination attenuator. For each channel, I can set the condenser contrast because I have the channels are both for fluorescence as well as for transmitted light. So I need to have here all the controls that are relevant for setting the channels. I can set the uh, condenser aperture, uh, the transmitted light illumination power, and what will be the shutter that applies to that channel. So for fluorescent channel, it has to be the reflected light shutter. Uh, and for, uh, let's say the bright field. So here I can set the, uh, you can set the power of the, the lamp that will be relevant. And of course, the also the condenser aperture. You can check whether the settings is. We are using here, that's A. And then if I press acquire, I should acquire, a, a, in this case, a three channel image. So 
So here I can uh, view the, the image. Uh, overlay of all channels. And here by I have this icon of symbol of an eye uh, where I can uh, switch uh, different uh, off, uh, can switch on and off different panels. Now, uh, uh, just to uh, go through other uh, basic uh, functionalities. So uh, I can set up a, a stack where I would uh, uh, where I can either uh, set it in absolute uh, or in uh, relative. Uh, coordinates and uh, if I said absolute that means that I can focus to the required uh, plane where I want to start and end my stack I can take the live image and say here I said Set start and set end, and then I specify the the step size. And I probably. Ambitious. And uh, now here I can see the, the summary of how many images I would be uh, taking. And uh, uh, I can remove some channels, for example, to make it. Uh, and here is another uh, important feature. I can set the acquisition order, whether I want to have uh, first change all the slices, uh, first acquire all the slices, and then uh, change the channel, or whether I want, be, I want to change uh, first all the channels for each slice. So that, of course, will have implications on the speed. If I now press wire. Okay, so uh, now I see that I have, I got confused by this acquisition order. So I wanted to do in this way. So here is the, the here is an explanatory that says it's the channel one, uh, Z one, channel one, Z two. So that's what I wanted. And now it should be a bit faster, but that I reduce the number of times that I need to switch the the channels.
Yeah, I think I will stop it. It's long. Okay, and back to uh, what we have here. So other than channels and stack, we have here time points. So for setting a time lapse, which uh, so, uh, uh, we set the number of uh, cycles that we want to acquire and interval between them. I think that's quite straightforward. And uh, 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 here at the bottom is an important function that allows us to uh, define the, the path where we want to save the images and a name prefix. So by this we can automatically save the files to a desired folder and give them uh, a name that we want. Uh, you can also notice that here is uh, an autofocus uh, section. So uh, it, you can set up autofocusing when you are taking multi-position or time-lapse uh, acquisitions. So the, uh, the multi, uh, the, the autofocus could be, of course, it uh, could be hardware autofocus if the microscope is equipped with hardware autofocus, which is supported by Micromanager, or it can be software autofocus, which is built in, in Micromanager. And there are even several uh, autofocus uh, plugins in Micromanager. So uh, here, if I press this on the autofocus, this spanner icon, I can uh, select different, uh, different autofocus algorithms. So there is, for example, one with, uh, with a promising name, autofocus. And then I can uh, set here uh, uh, different uh, tune the settings. So uh, unlike maybe in some uh, commercial softwares uh, where the autofocus is more pre-tuned, uh, here uh, it needs a little bit of uh, setting in order to make it work. Uh, so, for example, the, the range you need to uh, set uh, because depending on what uh, objectives you are using, uh, different ranges might make sense uh, and the exposure so that it's not overexposed. So I set it to uh, 10 uh, seconds and uh, I will increase the range because we have now five times objective, so the depth of focus is quite uh, large. And see the, the progress. Let's now uh, okay, now get it's focus a bit so let's try to call the autofocus by pressing this binoculars icon which will uh, call the focus to search for focus okay maybe the range wasn't uh, large enough so it can Now it looks much better. So if you are uh, want to run a long-term experiment uh, and um, 
uh, you want to do, you need autofocusing. So there is uh, this option in Micromanager. Now let's take a look here at the, the last of the multi-D acquisition, which is uh, multi-position acquisition. So that is, uh, I either we can uh, press here to edit position list. So we can either remember discrete positions. For example, if we want to do a time lapse and look at several different positions in the sample. So by pressing uh, here, uh, so I can uh, uh, here remember uh, the at the current position to the to the list of positions by pressing the mark. So that will now remember the current position and then I can move to another position and again mark the position. Or if I want to do a tile scan, I can uh, press here, create grid. And uh, I can uh, set the limits for the tile scan. So for example, I want to capture this whole uh, section. So this would be the bottom. The left hand side. Then I can uh, set the overlap between the tiles to, for example, 10%. And by pressing OK, I will get a, a list of position for the tile scan. So you can see here that uh, in the sum uh, summary, because I'm not doing now a stack, so I have just six positions, so that would be the six tiles. So now I press acquire and acquire those six images. And now comes uh, something that could be a bit of a problem. Uh, it's not so convenient, I would say here in Micromanager, and that is stitching the images because you might be used from commercial microscope software that they might stitch uh, the images for you on the go. Now this, that, there's no such feature in Micromanager. Uh, we can, uh, what we can do is uh, uh, are, uh, we can use uh, stitching plugins that are available in ImageJ or Fiji. Uh, so I will uh, have here Fiji open, but uh, there are powerful uh, stitching plugins in Fiji. Uh, but the problem is that uh, because the integration between the acquisition and the stitching plugin is lacking, so it could be quite tedious to set correctly, to have correctly the names of the files set and all the parameters uh, correctly defined so that the stitching uh, plugin will correctly stitch those images. So that's where uh, maybe some customization is needed. So uh, we have here created a, a very simple macro in uh, ImageJ that uh, helps to, uh, to correctly call the, the stitching plugin and, uh, and uh, run. 
under stitching. So I don't want to create here impression that uh, our uh, that the macro that I will be now running does the the stitching. That's not true because the stitching that's the that's the difficult the non-trivial part, and uh, the stitching is done by uh, Stefan Preibisch's plugin. But what the the macro does is just to uh, simplify uh, calling the uh, this plugin that we don't need to uh, take care of, uh, let's say, the, the names of the, of the file. So we can use uh, how they come out from Micromanager. Uh, so I will show you. So I'll go now here. I have a keyboard shortcut G that will call the macro. And here I uh, set the style overlap in percent. So if you remember, I set it to be 10% and I press OK. And I select the, uh, the what I want to run. I put this on desktop and it's the last one. And here comes the stitched image. So I admit it's not as convenient as maybe in Zen where it is stitched on the go, but it's still not, not that painful. And of course it can be, it can be then run in a, the macro can be then run in a batch. So if you acquire a lot of tile scans, then you can process it all in a, in a batch. Okay, so now that I, I touched on uh, image A and Fiji, so you may have noticed that when I open Micromanager, uh, there is also image A that popped up. So Micromanager and image A uh, are integrated, uh, which is very useful because uh, it also allows you to uh, do some uh, on the, the goal processing of the images as they come from the camera in Micromanager, you can run something on them in image chain. Maybe if we have time later, I will show you something uh, in that. But now, uh, so there's, of course, there's more uh, similarity between Micromanager and image chain in the sense that they are both uh, open source software uh, community um, driven, and it means that uh, in both cases you have some core functionalities. Plus, uh, it that it they can be uh, extended by uh, plugins and scripts developed by uh, by the community by different users. So that is also the case of uh, micromanager. So beside the core function, uh, functionalities, there are different plugins, which uh, help with some uh, specific uh, tasks. Uh, so for example, uh, under acquisition uh, tools, uh, there's the uh, there's a tool which is called high content screening site generator, and that's uh, something uh, which you know from again from many commercial software, microscope control software that there are tools that uh, take a template of a multiple plate or a chambered uh, cover slip and then allow you to uh, define. Uh, positions or tile regions uh, based on the layout of uh, such a, a sample carrier. So this is also exists uh, as a plugin in Micromanager. 
Uh, there's another, uh, uh, there are many plugins, but maybe uh, I won't mention Micro Magellan uh, plugin, which has, uh, it's another uh, uh, tool for tile scans. And it also uh, has uh, features uh, like focus surface that you might know from some commercial software that it allows allows you to uh, define a focus surface and then it refocuses uh, in different tiles based on the focus surface. Unfortunately, I cannot show you this plugin because for some reasons which are not clear and I have been in contact with the developer and we'll probably get back to this. Uh, it somehow doesn't work with uh, any of our size microscope because it doesn't open the, uh, the shutter for illumination. Uh, it worked, I tested it on uh, another brand microscopes and it worked okay. So there is some, something uh, not, not entirely clear here. So that, those are uh, examples of the plugins. And then you can uh, extend the functionalities by uh, quite simple uh, scripting. If you want to do, let's say, not nothing so fancy, but uh, help you automate uh, some acquisition or some tasks. So uh, there's a, a tool for scripting, script panel, which uses uh, Beam Shell, which is a Java-based uh, scripting language, so you can uh, here programmatically automate uh, functions of uh, micromanagers. So this is something uh, I would say analogous to uh, the ImageJ macro language in ImageJ. And I can uh, show you an example of uh, something that uh, I, I created a small uh, bean shell script uh, to address the fact that I cannot set the condenser aperture, uh, set it in numerical aperture of the condenser. So it is in millimeters. So that's not so intuitive. So let's say I want to set it uh, to be somewhere like 80% of the numerical aperture of uh, the objective for bright field. But then here, I don't know what would be the it in millimeters. So I have I would have to recalculate every time. So that would be an inconvenience. So on the tools with access panel, I can call my mean shell script called condenser uh, A. And it's very simple, but it's just here I will set the condenser an A. For example, my five times objective has uh, an A 0 0.16. So I would want to set it to 0 0.2. That's it. Very, very simple utility. So I'll just show it as an example how uh, where let's say the, the features in micromanager as such are not so convenient. One can work around it with uh, sometimes with such simple scripts. And uh, just to mention here, uh, micromanager, uh, I didn't mention area, but that's primarily designed to control wide field microscopes. But uh it is uh, flexible enough that it can sometimes be used for uh, to control systems which are for which it wasn't primarily designed. Then I can cite an example of our uh, confocal Raman system at CellC, which is controlled by micromanager. So that uh, required a bit more creativity in uh, using some of the features for what they were not primarily designed for. But here I'm sitting at a wide field microscope. So that's the, everything 
uh, is used in a in the way it was intended. Okay, so I think I uh, show you here uh, the main uh, controls. Uh, so I'll now to go to some more uh, tricky things. Uh, so uh, here you you might have um, so here one thing is that if let's say for those of you who are familiar with Zen, so you might know that there are these uh, uh, when you are setting on setting the uh, image acquisition that there are these blue and gray uh, fields which correspond whether that component uh, is controlled by uh, that channel settings or not. So, for example, for fluorescent channels, you don't uh, you don't want to bother about condenser settings or, or about the uh, the voltage of the transmitted light lamp. So whatever they are, they stay, and you don't change, you don't set them explicitly to any value for the for uh, uh, the fluorescent channels. But this is not the case in micromanager. Here, uh, unfortunately, there are no blue and gray uh, settings. So each channel has its explicit settings. So if my fluorescent channel has uh, some setting of the transmitted light, uh, transmitted light uh, voltage, well, it will, uh, when it goes to that channel, it will change the voltage to that channel. Uh, it might not matter for modern microscopes with LEDs because I can modulate them very fast. So it doesn't matter I change their uh, power uh, for every channel. But for this old school microscope with a halogen lamp, and I'll take it with, I'm talking about something which is becoming irrelevant in our days, but there are still such microscopes around. Uh, so th there, it's not, not a great idea to keep changing the voltage because if when you change the voltage, there's some ramping up. So when I switch to the uh, transmitted light channel and the, let's say the fluorescent channel before had a different voltage, there will be some uh, gradual change in the, the brightness of the, the lamp while I am acquiring the channel. So that's not, Ideal and so not good for the for the halogen bulb. So uh, one way, of course, would be that I would go through all the channels and then make sure that I set the transmitted light power to the same values for all the fluorescence channel. But that's a bit of a nuisance. Uh, so uh, for uh, that reason, I uh, have created additional hardware configuration settings. So this is the most generic one, but I have created, um, let's say, more practical hardware configuration settings. So I can go now device load hardware configuration. And uh, one of them is uh, this Z1FL, so that is for fluorescence. And uh, how I dealt with this issue is that because in most cases, I'm not saying that it's always the case, but for most cases, uh, users use multiple fluorescence channels and one transmitted light channel, either maybe bright field or phase contrast, but often it's just one transmitted light channel plus maybe two or three uh, fluorescent channels. So how I dealt in this, uh, this setting called FL, I have uh, changed here uh, that uh, it doesn't, this 
settings for the channels do not contain any uh, settings relevant to, uh, to transmitted light imaging. So then it will rely on whatever I set here. That will then apply to transmitted light settings. So I set here the power of the lamp, I set here the aperture. And then while I do uh, the fluorescent channels, it will not be affected. Uh, they will not be affected by it, and it will apply always to the uh, to the transmitted light channel. So it doesn't allow me to have multiple transmitted light channels with, let's say, different condenser aperture, with different uh, transmitted light power, but that's usually not. That's not something that uh, is typically needed. And another uh, issue that we encountered is that uh, sometimes people use don't use fluorescence. They use only transmitted light, maybe bright field, face contrast, DIC, maybe bright field and face contrast, but no fluorescence. And in this case, the the problem was that micromanager because there were settings which involve in, in the hardware configuration there was the uh, epifluorescence lamp involved and when the lamp was not on then it gave error and we, we couldn't start micromanager so not to have to switch on the epifluorescence lamp when you don't want to use fluorescence that would be wasteful of the lamp hours. So I created another uh, another uh, hardware configuration, which is called uh, Z1TL, transmitted light. And that one doesn't involve the epifluorescence lamp. So that's just, uh, that is just a setting for uh, transmitted light uh, channels. So let this. And uh, then, of, so these are kind of generic settings. And then, uh, as I showed you for each uh, channel, I can set, for example, the these different parameters that are involved. So if I change them, Okay, so if I go to edit, so there I can set, set the uh, condenser aperture, for example, and the uh, lamp voltage, so I can set it, uh, I can have some settings. And uh, if I want to next time use exactly the same settings, so all I need to do is now to press here save, and that will allow me to save a copy of the hardware configuration file. So I can create a copy, my personal copy, and any user can create their personal copy. So when next time they want to do the same experiment, they just load their personal copy and all the settings will be there. Uh, I have created one more generic uh, configuration, which I will show you now. And it's the one uh, that the one bright field color. So this is just a configuration which involves a workaround because the camera at this microscope is a monochrome camera, but sometimes someone would like to see their sample in color. 
So the trick here is that uh, uh, there are three uh, channels defined. And uh, these three channels are called blue, green, and red. So they correspond to the RGB components of a color image. So if I now uh, take a uh, run uh, for an image, yeah. Yeah, we can even do a multi position to make it nicer. So we do a we do the file scan. And well, I could have changed here the exposure times to, uh, so changing the exposure times, that's basically doing white balance that I uh, changed the, them to, to have approximately to match their histograms. Then I can again uh, stitch them. Of course, I would have to now uh, since I haven't done the the right balance by exposure, so I will have to do it. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's not the color rendition is not perfect, but. Uh, I hope that gives you an idea how I can how I can uh, do how I can uh, do uh, color images by using multiple. Uh, By using multiple uh, channels in a uh, micromanager. Okay. So uh, I have been talking for quite a long and uh, tiring Cubis micromanager. So I will now uh, ask if there are any questions and maybe i don't know if anyone has posted any questions in the chat no no questions in the chat so if there are any questions you can ask And uh, if not, and if you are, if you still, if you are not yet totally tired of micromanage, I can show you a, a few more things that can be done in micromanager, or maybe I can show you how to, uh, how uh, this, hardware from from the beginning no no questions to stage okay so I hope it doesn't mean that uh, 
you have that I made I made you completely confused. So uh, maybe one uh, more simple uh, trick here. So I mentioned that there's the image A in paired with micromanager. So I can run some uh, scripts, some macros on the images which I acquire from camera. So I'll have an example here, which I cannot show you here the proper use of the example because it's a, a uh, macro for aligning image splitters. I don't have here any image splitters. By image splitters, I mean those devices that split the image according to spectral bands, according to color on uh, two halves of the camera. So one half is one channel, another half is the, the same uh, area in another channel. So I have half of the field of view, but I can acquire two channels truly simultaneously. And for it to, so if I want to do any colocalization between the channels, which is typically uh, what is done uh, in such cases, I need to make sure that I have it correctly aligned so I can properly overlay the corresponding pixels in the two uh, in the two halves of the camera. So then the alignment is typically done using a grid. And uh, to make sure that uh, I am uh, looking at uh, uh, the corresponding uh, part of the grid in, uh, in both channels. And then I, uh, one way to, to evaluate the overlap is to uh, plot the intensity in one half of the camera against the intensity in the other half of the camera. So if I have the grid and then the, the lines overlap correctly, then uh, that means that uh, in that case, the uh, I should have a good correlation in intensity between the two halves. So uh, I will have. One thing like this, great. And then I will be uh, one half would be in one channel, another half in another channel. So one would be green, one red. And if I have it well aligned, then uh, there will be a good correlation between the intensity of these of corresponding pixels in green and in red channel. And then I can call here this. Uh, macro, which first asks whether the splitting is horizontal or vertical, so whether the two uh, half, whether the two image channels are uh, left and right half or top and bottom half of the, the camera. And then there are the settings of the of the, uh, the regions. So of course uh, in the practical case, I have a splitter. I would typically have the shift want to be half of the, the size of the camera. And then by aligning the splitter, I maximize the correlations. Of course, in this case, it's not uh, it's not possible. So here, the correlation will depends on how well uh, I set the shift to match the, uh, the periodicity of the grid. And then it will then it will give such a, an image, which is a live image. So it is updated uh, with the camera image. So if I would be now tuning an image splitter, I would see how it is changing and I would try to maximize the R square values. So that uh, just to show you that it can change. So if I defocus it, then of course, kind of, Blur a bit the the edges so the that uh, make it 
appear to be a better aligned or if I then on the other hand move the stage and I move out from the partially move out from the grid in one of the regions then of course the correlation will be lost. So that's uh, that's one example how uh, I have in the past used micromanager to uh, make alignment of image splitters easier. And now, if you have the, if you still uh, are not too tired of micromanager, I can show you how to let's say when you want to. Uh, connect a control at the microscope in micromanager. So we uh, can go to hardware configuration wizard. And let's say we now we pretend we don't have yet the, the configuration that I've already had here. And we say we want to create a new configuration. And now we need to add the devices that we want to control. So my what I have here is a size microscope. So I select here size uh, 1029, edit. whether I shouldn't have first closed the hardware configuration file. Ah, may, ah I see. I have, have to no I have to edit by here the device. So I can go here to uh, size Axio Observer controls through serial interface ah, and add. And now there might be, there are a number of uh, settings that uh, I have to be a bit careful. Uh, like for example, which COM port it is connected to and what is the port rate. And that I believe it has to be a specific value, which I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but we will see. You can find all this in the in the documentation for the device adapter. So I remember I said it correctly. And then I put a uh, reflector turret, objective turret, basically all the all the uh, components that I have there. So I have added some components. There are a lot of them. I um, unnecessary doesn't have to be uh, exhaustive uh, list for this demo. And then I need to add a camera. So that one I believe is maybe found separately. It is uh, Axio Cam, the size uh, camera. Okay, and then I could be adding more and more uh, uh, devices if I had them connected there. 
So then in the next step, I can select the default camera in case there are multiple cameras. Uh, I can select the default shutter, default focus. Uh, and then uh, for some of the devices, like for uh, the nose piece, for reflector turret, so there are different uh, states, and each state uh, has uh, can have some description. So it will um, it will read the description. I can modify them here uh, if I want to change the way how the uh, how the, the different uh, positions are called. The same is here for the objective turret. So it already comes pre-populated, but I can still edit here. And now then I can save it under a name. Let's call it test. Then here for configuration. Step one S. When I finish, it will load uh, it will load the new configuration. Which remember I had here all these controls and they are gone uh, because they were part of the configuration. So I now I will have to uh, add them. So I uh, select a group. So if I want to have uh, a group where I control only, for example, the objective, so I can call the group objective, and I select here what components I want to control in that group. And I will select, in this case, uh, here, size objective turret label and now this group has here uh, loaded uh, these presets but i can also create groups like my group uh, called channel which uh, contains controls multiple uh, multiple devices so for example uh, the channel might uh, control uh, the reflector turret, reflector turret, as well as, for example, the field diaphragm and maybe uh, halogen lamp voltage. And then I can create different presets and give them names. So I can create a preset bright field, which will have used this uh, BIC transmitted light filter queue. And then I can uh, add, go on uh, create new presets so I can create a preset which uses Duffy filter cube and will be called Duffy and so on. So now I have also created. Yes, it's there already. So and in this way I could create all the presets that I want. So I won't uh, try to repopulate all this. I just mentioned there's one more uh, thing uh, that I would need to set to have it all correctly set, and that is the pixel scaling. So that is on the devices pixel size calibration, where I can create a new uh, pixel size calibration where I uh, have to do it for every uh, objective. So I will say here that this is, for example, uh, for the, the five times objective. 
and I will uh, put here uh, pixel size from the known camera pixel and the known magnification. And then I will uh, calculate the, the transform. And this is not just pixel calibration, but it also uh, encodes the, how the camera image is rotated. So I have to, here, uh, if I'm setting a new system, I have to play around a bit here uh, so that the, the camera rotation is correct with respect to the movement of the stage. So I might have to invert this matrix uh, if I find that it's not working correctly so that uh, when the stage moves that the, the images uh, kind of I do the tiles so that the images correctly connect to each other. I see a question in the chat. Would it have to be redone if I moved from one windows to another? Uh, I don't think so. This this should be, uh, uh, of course. I if I uh, if I have a so this is a if I'm using a, uh, a new version of Micromanager, uh, then. That should be compatible with uh, new versions of Windows. If I have a very old version of Micromanager, maybe there could be some issues, but in I I won't expect uh, there to be any uh, any serious problems. <laughs> 